Laudate Jesus Christus. Praise be Jesus Christ. A very warm welcome to you on behalf of Vatican Media, Vatican Radio, and all my colleagues here at the Vatican's Dicastery for Communication. We're here for the Pope's general audience on today, Wednesday, the 6th of December. It's being held in the Vatican's Paul VI Hall, and it looks like we're about to get started. I'll just say a very warm welcome to all of you, whether you're joining us via our Vatican News YouTube channel, Radio Maria, Ma Radio Maria Papua New Guinea, Radio Maria England, Catholic Faith Network in America, Shalom World TV, Sultan Light TV, At Madison TV, EWN TV, Uganda Catholic Television, Catholic TV, Luminous Radio India, or via any local or there are some radio stations around the world. And Pope Francis will now open the general audience with the sign of the cross and the liturgical greeting. Peace be with you, the Pope says. And we'll now hear a reading from the Acts of the Apostles in various languages, starting with Italian. Dagli Atti degli Apostoli. Dopo la risurrezione, quelli che erano con lui gli domandavano: Signore, è questo il tempo nel quale ricostituirai il regno per Israele? Ma egli rispose: Non spetta a voi conoscere tempi o momenti che il Padre ha riservato al suo potere, ma riceverete la forza dallo Spirito Santo che scenderà su di voi e di me sarete testimoni a Gerusalemme, in tutta la Giudea e la Samaria e fino ai confini della terra. Parola di Dio. And now we'll hear the same reading in French. Des actes des apôtres. Après la résurrection, les apôtres l'interrogeaient. Seigneur, est-ce maintenant le temps où tu vas rétablir le royaume pour Israël? Jésus leur répondit. Il ne vous appartient pas de connaître les temps et les moments que le Père a fixés de sa propre autorité. Mais vous allez recevoir une force quand le Saint-Esprit viendra sur vous. Vous serez alors mes témoins à Jérusalem, dans toute la Judée et la Samarie, et jusqu'aux extrémités de la terre. Parole du Seigneur. And that reading will now be read in English. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Lesung aus der Apostelgeschichte. Als sie nun beisammen waren, fragten sie ihn, Herr, stellst du in dieser Zeit das Reich für Israel wieder her? Er sagte zu ihnen, euch steht es nicht zu, Zeiten und Fristen zu erfahren, die der Vater in seiner Macht festgesetzt hat. Aber ihr werdet Kraft empfangen, wenn der Heilige Geist auf euch herabkommen wird. Und ihr werdet meine Zeugen sein in Jerusalem und in ganz Judäa und bis an die Grenzen der Erde. Wort des lebendigen Gottes. And so that was the reading in German, and we should now be hearing it in Spanish, which is of course Pope Francis' native language. Lectura del libro de los Hechos de los Apóstoles. 
Después de la resurrección, los que estaban reunidos le preguntaron, Señor, ¿es ahora cuando vas a restaurar el reino de Israel? Él les respondió, no les corresponde a ustedes conocer el tiempo y el momento que el Padre ha establecido con su propia autoridad, pero recibirán la fuerza del Espíritu Santo que descenderá sobre ustedes y serán mis testigos en Jerusalén, en toda Judea y Samaría y hasta los confines de la tierra. Palabra de Dios. And after that reading in Spanish, we'll now hear the same reading in Portuguese. Leitura dos Atos dos Apóstolos Então os que estavam reunidos perguntaram a Jesus, Senhor, é agora que vais restaurar o reino em Israel? Jesus respondeu, Não vos cabe saber os tempos e os momentos que o Pai determinou com a sua própria autoridade. Mas recebereis o poder do Espírito Santo que descerá sobre vós para seres minhas testemunhas em Jerusalém, em toda a Judéia e na Samaria e até os confins da terra. Palavra do Senhor. And now we'll hear the reading in Arabic. قراءة من أعمال الرسل بعد قيامته من بين الأموات هؤلاء الذين كانوا مجتمعين معه سألوها يا رب أفي هذا الزمن تعيد الملك إلى إسرائيل فقال لهم ليس لكم أن تعرفوا الأزمنة والأوقات التي حددها الآب بذات سلطانه ولكن الروح القدس ينسل عليكم فتنالون قدرة وتكونون لي شهودا في أورشليم وكل اليهودية والسامرة حتى أقاصي الأرض كلام الرب. And now for the final reading which will be in Polish and after that we'll go straight to Pope Francis and his catechesis for this week. Czytanie z dziejów apostolskich. Po zmartwychwstaniu zapytywali go zebrani Panie, czy w tym czasie przywrócisz Królestwo Izraela? Odpowiedział im, nie wasza to rzecz znać czasy i chwile, które Ojciec ustalił swoją władzą. Ale gdy Duch Święty stąpi na was, otrzymacie Jego moc i będziecie moimi świadkami w Jerozolimie i w całej Judei i w Samarii i aż po krańce ziemi. Oto Słowo Boże. Now we'll hear Pope Francis' catechesis for, for this week, which is the last in his four-part series summing up apostolic zeal, starting from his 2013 encyclical, Evangelii Gaudium. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. And you're all welcome. Today, too, I have asked for the help of Monsignor Campanelli because I, I'm, I'm doing better, but I, I struggle if I have to read a lot. And so it will be Monsignor Campanelli who will read my catechesis today. Dear brothers and sisters, in the last catechesis, we saw that the proclamation of the Gospel is joy. It is for everyone, and it is addressed to the world of today. Now, let us discover a final essential characteristic. It is necessary that the proclamation takes place in the Holy Spirit. Indeed, to communicate God, the joyful credibility of testimony, the universal universality of the proclamation, and the timeliness of the message are not enough. Without the Holy Spirit, all zeal is vain and falsely apostolic. It would only be our own and would not bear fruit. In Evangelii Gaudium, I recalled that, quote, Jesus is the first and greatest evangelizer, that in every activity of evangelization, the primacy always belongs to God, who called us to cooper cooperate with him and who leads us on by the power of his spirit. 
End quote. Here is the primacy of the Holy Spirit. Thus, the Lord compares the dynamism of the kingdom of God to a man who scatters seed upon the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He knows not how. The Spirit is the protagonist. He always precedes the missionaries and makes the fruit grow. This knowledge comforts us a great deal, and it helps us to specify another, equally decisive, namely, that in her apostolic zeal, the Church does not announce herself, but a grace, a gift, and the Holy Spirit is precisely the gift of God, as Jesus said to the Samaritan woman. The primacy of the Spirit should not, however, induce us to indolence. Confidence does not justify disengagement. The vitality of the seed that grows by itself does not authorize farmers to neglect the field. Jesus, in giving his last recommendations before ascending to heaven, said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. That's a quote from Acts. The Lord has not left us theological dispensations or a pastoral manual to apply, but the Holy Spirit who inspires the mission. And the, the courageous initiative that the Spirit instills in us leads us to imitate his style, which always has two characteristics creativity and simplicity. Creativity to proclaim Jesus with joy to everyone and today. In this age of ours, which does not help us to have a religious outlook on life, and in which the proclamation has become in various places more difficult, arduous, apparently fruitless, the temptation to desist from pastoral service may arise. Perhaps one takes refuge in safety zones, like the habitual repetition of things one, ha one always does, or in the alluring calls of an intimate spirituality, or even in a misunderstood sense of the centrality of the liturgy. They are temptations that disguise themselves as fidelity to tradition, but often, rather than responses to the Spirit, they are reactions to personal dissatisfactions. Instead, pastoral creativity, being bold in the Spirit, ardent in his missionary fire, is the proof of fidelity to him. Therefore, I wrote that, quote, Jesus can also break through the dull categories with which we would enclose him and he constantly amazes us by his, by his divine creativity. Whenever we make the effort to return to the source and to recover the original freshness of the gospel, new avenues arise, new paths of creativity open up with different forms of expression, more eloquent signs and words with new meaning for today's word. End of quote from Evangelii Gaudium. Creativity, therefore, and then simplicity, precisely because the Spirit takes us to the source, to the first proclamation. Indeed, it is the fire of the Spirit that leads us to believe in Jesus Christ who, by his death and resurrection, reveals and communicates to us the Father's infinite mercy. This is the first proclamation, which must be the center of all evangelizing activity and all efforts at church renewal, to say over and over, Jesus Christ loves you, he gave his life to save you, and now he is living at your side every day to enlighten, strengthen, and free you. Brothers and sisters, let us allow ourselves to be drawn by the Spirit and invoke Him every day. May He be the source of our being and our work. May He be the origin of every activity, encounter, meeting and proclamation. He enlivens and rejuvenates the Church. With Him we must not fear, because He, who is harmony, always keeps creativity 
and simplicity together inspires communion and sends out in mission, opens to diversity and leads back to unity. He is our strength, the breath of our proclamation, the source of apostolic zeal. Come, Holy Spirit. And so after that catechesis, we'll now have a summary of the catechesis in various languages. Uh, for, th for those here who do not understand Italian, it's beginning with French, we won't be translating the summary since you just heard the whole catechesis there in an English translation, but what we will be translating is the exchange of greetings that happens after the summary between the Pope and the speakers of each language group. If that sounds complicated, you'll see later on. For now, we have this summary in French and then later on an exchange of greetings, which I will translate. Il l'accorde spécialement aux enfants, aux personnes âgées et aux personnes qui souffrent. Il bénira également les chapelets et les autres objets de dévotion que vous avez apportés à cette intention. Voici un résumé en français de la catéchèse du Saint-Père. Chers frères et sœurs, je voudrais vous parler aujourd'hui du primat de l'Esprit-Saint dans l'annonce de l'Évangile. Sans lui, notre zèle serait vain et faussement apostolique. Il serait notre œuvre et ne porterait pas de fruits. Jésus est le premier évangélisateur et il nous appelle à évangéliser dans la force de son esprit. L'Église ne s'annonce pas elle-même, mais elle annonce le don de Dieu qui est l'Esprit Saint. Cet esprit nous précède et cela doit nous consoler. Cependant, ce primat de l'esprit ne doit pas nous conduire à l'indolence et justifier un désengagement en ces temps difficiles où la tentation est grande de se réfugier dans des zones de confort. L'esprit nous pousse toujours à œuvrer à la mission avec créativité et simplicité. Il se manifeste par l'audace pastorale pour porter l'essentiel du message qui est la mort et la résurrection du Christ, et son amour pour nous, invoquons-le toujours. Viens, Esprit Saint. Maintenant, les salutations en italien des fidèles de langue française. Saluto cordialmente les personnes de langue française, en particulier les pellegrini provenienti de la France, l'institution Nostra Signora Santa Famiglia et les falegnami de l'officine Perrault che lavorano alla Cattedrale Nostra Signora di Parigi. Lo Spirito Santo ci guidi nell'annuncio del Vangelo. Dio vi benedica. Je salue cordialement I cordially greet the French speakers here today, in particular the pel pilgrims from France, the Our Lady Holy Family Institute, and the carpenters from the Officine Perrault who work at the Cathedral of Our Lady in Paris. May the Holy Spirit guide us in the proclamation of the Gospel and may God bless you. And for those of you who are curious, the Pope's Catechesis and now the greetings are being read by Monsignor Filippo Ciampanelli, who's an official from the Vatican's Secretariat of State. Most Holy Father, the English-speaking pilgrims and visitors wish to express to you their sentiments of deep respect and esteem and to assure you of their prayers for your ministry as the successor of St. Peter. At the end of the audience, we will sing together the Our Father in Latin. His Holiness will then impart his apostolic blessing, which he extends in a particular way to the members of your families at home. He also intends to bless any religious articles you may have brought for this purpose. And in a special way, his blessing goes to your children, the elderly, and those who are sick. The following is a summary of the Holy Father's catechesis at the beginning of the audience. Dear brothers and sisters, in our continuing catechesis on apostolic zeal, we now reflect on how the preaching of the gospel always takes place in the power of the Holy Spirit. As the gift of God, the Spirit prepares, sustains, and fosters growth and new life in the church. Yet, in every activity of evangelization, 
the primacy always belongs to God the Father, who sent his Son among us and bestowed the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the Church. In our witness to the risen Christ, we are called to imitate the creativity and simplicity that are the hallmark of the Spirit's work. May the fire of the Holy Spirit continue to burn within us, strengthen us in unity and missionary zeal as we strive to be joyful witnesses of our salvation in Christ, even to the ends of the earth. The Holy Father will now greet us in Italian. Do il benvenuto a tutti i pellegrini di lingua inglese, specialmente ai gruppi provenienti da Malta, Australia, Malaysia, Giappone, Indonesia e Stati Uniti d'America. Su tutti voi e sulle vostre famiglie invoco la gioia e la pace del Signore nostro Gesù Cristo. Dio vi benedica. I welcome all the English speaking pilgrims taking part in today's audience particularly the groups from Malta, Australia, Malaysia, Japan, Indonesia, and the United States of America. Upon all of you and upon your families, I invoke the peace and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. So that was, of course, the summary and greetings in English, and now we'll hear the same thing in German. Heiliger Vater, die Gläubigen deutscher Sprache möchten Ihnen ihre herzliche Zuneigung und aufrichtige Verbundenheit bekunden und versichern Sie zugleich Ihres Gebets in allen Anliegen Ihres universalen apostolischen Dienstes. Zum Schluss dieser Audienz singen wir gemeinsam das Vater Unser in lateinischer Sprache. Danach wird der Heilige Vater den apostolischen Segen erteilen. Gern schließt er darin ihre Angehörigen ein, besonders die Kinder, die älteren Menschen und die Leidenden. Er segnet auch die Rosenkränze und die übrigen Andachtsgegenstände, die sie dafür mitgebracht haben. Es folgt nun eine Zusammenfassung der Katechese des Heiligen Vaters in deutscher Sprache. Liebe Brüder und Schwestern, Jesus ist der allererste und größte Künder des Evangeliums. In jeglicher Form von Evangelisierung liegt der Vorrang immer bei Gott, der uns zur Mitarbeit mit ihm gerufen und uns mit der Kraft seines Geistes angespornt hat. Die Verkündigung des Evangeliums muss daher stets im Heiligen Geist geschehen. Er allein bewirkt das Wachsen des Reiches Gottes. Er allein schenkt unserem Tun Fruchtbarkeit. Dieses Bewusstsein gibt uns Kraft und Trost und es erinnert uns daran, dass wir nicht uns selbst verkünden, sondern Christus, der uns durch seinen Tod und seine Auferstehung die unendliche Barmherzigkeit des Vaters offenbart und mitteilt. Dies darf uns jedoch nicht zur Untätigkeit verleiten. Vielmehr sind wir aufgerufen, uns den Stil des Heiligen Geistes zu eigen zu machen um die Menschen in Kreativität und Einfachheit zum Herrn zu führen. Der Heilige Vater richtet nun einen kurzen Gruß auf Italienisch an die deutschsprachigen Gläubigen. Cari fratelli e sorelle, oggi ricorre la memoria di San Nicola, Vescovo di Mira. Professando fermamente la fede in Gesù Cristo, figlio unigenito di Dio, si è sempre adoperato per i più vulnerabili nella società. Seguiamo il suo esempio per vivere bene questo tempo di avvento. Liebe Brüder und Schwestern, heute Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra. Firmly professing faith in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, he always worked for the most vulnerable in society. Let us follow his example to live well in this Advent season. And now we'll hear the catechesis and exchange of greetings in Spanish. Santo Padre, los visitantes y peregrinos de lengua española que participan en esta audiencia desean manifestarle cordialmente sus sentimientos de filial afecto que acompañan con fervientes oraciones por sus intenciones de pastor de toda la iglesia.
Al final de este encuentro se cantará el Padre Nuestro en latín. Después, su santidad impartirá a todos los presentes la bendición apostólica que extiende complacido a sus familiares, a los enfermos y a cuantos sufren. Bendecirá también los rosarios y demás objetos de devoción que los peregrinos llevan consigo. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, Hemos visto en las catequesis anteriores tres características del anuncio del Evangelio. Es alegría para todos y para hoy. En esta ocasión reflexionamos sobre un último aspecto. El protagonista del anuncio es el Espíritu Santo. Sin el Espíritu Santo, el celo apostólico sería vano. Se convertiría en algo solo nuestro y no daría verdadero fruto. La Iglesia no se anuncia a sí misma, sino que anuncia una gracia, un don, precisamente el don de Dios, con mayúsculas, que es su mismo Espíritu. El Espíritu Santo suscita la misión con creatividad y sencillez, dos notas distintivas que estamos llamados a vivir también nosotros. En primer lugar, creatividad pastoral para anunciar a Jesús en toda circunstancia y buscar siempre nuevos caminos evangelizadores que vayan al encuentro de los hombres y mujeres de nuestro tiempo. Y también sencillez, para que iluminados por el Espíritu Santo sepamos volver a las fuentes del primer anuncio y transmitir lo esencial de nuestra fe con frescura y entusiasmo. Saludo cordialmente a los peregrinos de lengua española. Pidamos al Espíritu Santo... I cordially greet the Spanish-speaking pilgrims. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the solemnity... Excuse me, I have the wrong, the wrong text here. One moment. ...y renueve en nosotros el celo apostólico, concediéndonos creatividad pastoral y sencillez evangélica. Que Jesús los bendiga y la Virgen Santa los cuide. Muchas gracias. Santo Padre, os fiéis de lengua portuguesa desejan testimonial filial afeto y e sincera fidelidad. E rezam por todas as intenções do seu Ministério Apostólico Universal. So, apologies for that. I appear not to have the Spanish text. So, I'm unable to provide a translation for that. Uh, we'll now hear the, uh, the catechesis and exchange of greetings in Portuguese. Again, apologies for not being able to provide a Spanish language commentary. Abençoará também os rosários e demais objetos de devoção que cada um tiver consigo. Leia agora um resumo da catequese. Meditamos hoje sobre uma quarta dimensão do zelo apostólico. O anúncio é movido pelo Espírito Santo. Em qualquer forma de evangelização, o primado é sempre de Deus, que quis chamar-nos para cooperar com Ele e impelir-nos com a força do Seu Espírito. O protagonista da evangelização é sempre o Espírito Santo. Mas isso não deve levar-nos à falta de empenho. O Senhor enviou-nos o Seu Espírito para que, impulsionados por Ele, anunciemos a boa nova a todos os cantos do mundo com criatividade e simplicidade. Em tempos em que escasseia a visão religiosa sobre a vida e torna-se difícil, cansativo e aparentemente infrutífero anunciar o Evangelho, é necessária a criatividade. Já a simplicidade deve levar-nos a anunciar o essencial, Jesus Cristo, que nos revela e comunica a misericórdia infinita do Pai. Agora, o Papa saúde em italianos fiéis de língua portuguesa. Saluto cordialmente i fedeli de língua portuguesa. Guidati dalla azione dello Spirito nella nostra vita, Impegniamoci con creatività e semplicità nella missione che il Signore ci ha affidato, 
annunciare con gioia a tutti la sua infinita misericordia. Dio vi benedica. Eis a tradução das suas palavras. Saúdo cordialmente os fiéis. I coldly greet the Portuguese-speaking faithful. Guided by the action of the Spirit in our lives, let us commit ourselves with creativity and simplicity to the mission the Lord has entrusted to us, to joyfully proclaim His infinite mercy to all. God bless you. And so now we will hear the summary of the catechesis and the exchange of greetings in Arabic. Ayuhal Abu al-Aqdas, yassurru al-mu'minin al-natiqina bil-lughati al-arabiyya al-hadirina huna an yu'abbiru lakum an masha'ir al-ahtirami wal-taqdir wa shukrihim al-banawiy wa yurfikunaha bi salawatihim al-daima ila Allah من أجل قداستكم وخدمتكم كخليفة القديس بطرس في نهاية هذه المقابلة سنرتل معا صلاة الأبانة باللغة اللاتينية ثم سيمنح الأب الأقدس جميع الحاضرين البركة الرسولية ويشمل بها جميع أحبائكم وخاصة الأطفال والمتزوجين حديثا والمسنين والمرضى والمتألمين بألام شديدة وسيبارك كذلك المسابحة والأشياء التقوية التي يحملها معه كل واحد منكم إليكم ملخص التعليم المسيحي لقداسة البابا فرانسيس تكلم قداسة البابا اليوم على الروح القدس العامل الرئيسي في البشارة بالإنجيل قال من الضروري أن تتم البشارة بالروح القدس فبدونه كل غيرة رسولية باطلة وكاذبة ولن تؤتي بثمر الروح القدس يدعونا إلى أن نتعاون مع الله هذه أولوية هو الأول في العمل هو يسبق المرسلين دائما وهو ينضج الثمار ومع ذلك فأن الاتكال على الروح القدس يجب ألا يقودنا إلى التراخي والتوقف عن البشارة فالمبادرة الشجاعة التي يفيدها الروح فينا تدفعنا إلى أن نقتدي بأسلوبه الذي يتميز دائما بميزتين الإبداع والبساطة في العمل الرعوي الإبداع هو الجرأة في الروح القدس وأن نكون متقدين بناره التي ترسلنا لحمل الرسالة فنكتشف طرقا جديدة وأساليب خلاقة وأشكال تعبير أخرى وكلمات محملة بمعنى متجدد لعالم اليوم والميزة الثانية هي البساطة إذ نعرف أنفسنا غير قادرين فنترك الروح القدس يقودنا إلى الينبوع وإلى البشارة الأولى هو الذي يجعلنا نؤمن بيسوع المسيح الذي كشف لنا ومنحنا بموته وقيامته من بين الأموات رحمة الآب التي لا نهاية لها هذه هي البشارة الأولى التي يجب أن تكون محور بشارتنا بالإنجيل وفي كل نية تجديد في الكنيسة الروح القدس هو قوتنا ونفس بشارتنا وينبوع الغيرة الرسولية والآن تحية البابا باللغة الإيطالية لأبناء الشرق الناطقين اللغة العربية Saluto i fedeli di lingua araba Sia lo Spirito Santo il principio del nostro essere e del nostro operare Sia all'inizio di ogni attività incontro e innuncio Egli vivifica e ringiovanisce la Chiesa Il Signore vi benedica tutti e vi protegga sempre da ogni male. I greet the Arabic-speaking faithful. May the Holy Spirit be the principle of our being and working. May He be the beginning of every activity, meeting and proclamation. He vivifies and rejuvenates the Church. May the Lord bless you all and protect you always from all evil.
وحماكم دائما من كل شر. So we now go to the last of the translations that's in Polish and after that we'll have the Pope's greeting to Italian speakers. There'll be no translation because the original catechesis was in Italian. And then after that we'll go straight to the conclusion of the German audience. So we'll have the Our Father prayed in Latin and then finally the Pope's apostolic blessing which goes out to all of us listening live. Uh, but first, as I was saying, the the catechesis in Polish. Po zakończeniu audiencji zaśpiewamy modlitwę Ojcze Nasz po łacinie. Po jej zakończeniu Ojciec Święty udzieli apostolskiego błogosławieństwa. Obejmując nim szczególnie dzieci, osoby w podeszłym wieku i dotknięte cierpieniem. Po błogosławi także różańce i dewocjonalia, jakie pielgrzymi przynoszą ze sobą. Oto streszczenie katechezy Ojca Świętego. Głoszenie Ewangelii musi się odbywać w Duchu Świętym. Aby przekazywać Boga, nie wystarczy wiarygodność świadectwa i aktualność przesłania. Bez Ducha Świętego wszelka gorliwość jest próżna i fałszywie apostolska. Byłaby jedynie naszą i nie przynosiłaby owoców. W każdej formie ewangelizacji prymat zawsze należy do Boga. Duch Święty zawsze poprzedza misjonarzy. Posyłając uczniów na głoszenie Ewangelii, zmartwychwstały Pan nie przekazał im skryptów czy podręcznika, Lecz powiedział, gdy Duch Święty stąpi na was, otrzymacie Jego moc i będziecie moimi świadkami aż po krańce ziemi. Duch Święty prowadzi nas do naśladowania Jego stylu, który ma zawsze dwie cechy, kreatywność i prostotę. Pozwólmy się zafascynować Duchowi Świętemu. To On ożywia i odmładza Kościół. Teraz usłyszymy słowa pozdrowienia Ojca Świętego skierowane do nas Polaków w języku włoskim. Saluto cordialmente i Polacchi e in particolare gli artisti che partecipano al concerto Salmi di pace e di ringraziamento che commemora la beatificazione della famiglia Ulma. Questa domenica in Polonia si celebrerà la giornata della preghiera e dell'aiuto materiale per la Chiesa dell'Est. Ringrazio tutti coloro che sostengono con le loro preghiere e le loro offerte la Chiesa in quei territori, specialmente nella martoriata Ucraina. Vi benedico di cuore. Oto słowa Ojca Świętego. I cordially greet the Polish speakers here today, and especially the artists participating in the concert Psalms of Peace and Thanksgiving, which commemorates the beatification of the Ulma family. This Sunday, Poland will celebrate the Day of Prayer and Material Aid for the Eastern Church. I thank all those who support the Church and that part of the world with their prayers and their offerings, especially in the tormented Ukraine. I bless you from my heart. And so the, the Ulma family mentioned in the Pope's greetings there is a family recently canonized. It was the mother, the father, and seven children were all canonized after being martyred by the Nazis for defending Jews during the Second World War. And so now we have the Pope's greetings to the Italian-speaking pilgrims, after which we'll go straight to the end of the audience with the singing of the Our Father and the Apostolic Blessing. A conclusione di questa udienza canteremo la preghiera del Padre Nostro in latino, terminata la quale il Santo Padre impartirà la benedizione apostolica che estende in modo speciale ai bambini, agli anziani, ai sofferenti. Benedirà anche i rosari e gli oggetti di devozione che ciascuno porta con sé. Nel salutare i pellegrini di lingua italiana, I greet the Italian speaking pilgrims and extend a cordial welcome to the seminary formators participating in the course sponsored by the Dicastery for Evangelization. Dear priests, may the Lord's continued assistance accompany you so that these days of study may revitalize your service to the Church. I am pleased to welcome the parish of St. Anthony of Padua in Terni and the parish of Our Lady of Pompeii in Andria, hoping that the visit to the tombs of the Apostles will arouse in each of you a renewed spiritual fervor. Finally, my greeting, I, I, I also greet the uh, Foundation from Mexico, dear Mexicans, I invite you to fight for the victims 
of a disaster there and also let us work for uh, people with disabilities, let us fight against throwaway culture and defend the uh, and defend human dignity. Finally, my greeting goes to the elderly, the sick, newlyweds and young people, with a special thought for the students of the Olado da Vinci Institute in Santa Maria Capua Vetere and Milazzo. We are now approaching the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Mary believed in God's love and responded with her yes. Learn from her full trust in the Lord and witness in order to witness everywhere to the goodness and love of the Gospel. And let us not forget to pray for those who suffer from the horrors of war, especially the people of Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. War is always a defeat. Nobody wins. Everybody loses. It is only the producers of weapons who win. And my blessing to all. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum, Et cum spiritu tuo. Sindome Domine Benedictum. Et hoc nunc et usque in seculum. Aiutor in nostrum in nomine Domine. Qui feci celum et terra. Benedicat vos omnipotes Deus, Pater, Silius et Spiritus Sanctus. And so with the Pope's apostolic blessing, which, as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, goes out to all of you who listen to that live, uh, the, this live broadcast of Pope Francis' general audience comes to an end. So today we heard a reflection from the Holy Father on the role of the Holy Spirit in spreading the gospel. He said that the Holy Spirit is necessary, and even if we have all the other elements which he was discussing in the previous weeks, if the Holy Spirit isn't there, then we won't be able to authentically proclaim the gospel. If you want to listen back to today's broadcast at any point, you can find it on our Vatican News YouTube channel or our Vatican News website. And you can also find there summaries of the Holy Father's discourses and homilies, as well as reports on his main activities, updates on his, updates on his health, as he continues to recover from this lung inflammation, which today meant that his catechesis was read by an assistant from the Secretary of State. And you can find us at www.vaticannews.va. Please do also take a look at our Facebook, X and Instagram pages. I've been Joseph Tollock. Thank you very much. And we hope you tune in again next time. Laudato Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. <laughs>